Hey everyone. Well, I'm here in our church building, which of course is closed right now. The back door is open. You might be able to hear the birds from the backyard. And I just wanted to get some time to rest and to breathe and to process some of what's been happening over the past week. Many of you are asking the same question that I ask myself right now. What do people of faith do with times like these? How do we reconcile our belief that there is a good and loving higher power with so much evidence of how broken we are, with so much enmity, with so many fractures right on the surface? How do we, how do we understand a God of love in the middle of that? And I get it. It's enough to shake your faith. The questions come and the doubts, you know, come to the surface. And then we have to say, well, what do I actually believe? It's one thing to profess a faith when you're sitting in a church building on a Sunday morning or relaxing at home when everything feels like it sort of makes sense. But when all the information that you have feels senseless and when there's so much injury, and there's so much uh, malevolence in front of you, then you have to ask yourself, do I really believe this? Is my faith story, does it hold up? And for me, it comes back to the, the life and the teachings of Jesus, because Jesus was a leader of the street. He was living alongside people. He was with the marginalized and the oppressed and the unseen, and the forgotten, and the maligned. And that's where he lived. That's where he did his ministry. And the words and teachings of Jesus always call us back to the margins. They always call us back to the, those who are being overlooked by society. They're always calling us back to be healers and protectors and lovers of humanity. And so in times like this, when you feel the unrest, when you feel how wrong it all is, that's an alarm that tells you that this is the place you need to move toward. People are always looking for evidence of God. And, and so when you see the news and there's so much that's negative, it's easy to say, well, God is not there. I choose to think that God is in the unrest in me and in you. I choose to believe that God or creator or divinity or goodness resides in the places in us that cannot abide this, that are sickened by what we're seeing. And so that's sort of an encouragement, I hope, that when you're watching the news and you're seeing what's happening and you're walking through the streets, and rather than being completely overwhelmed and rather than losing heart and rather than abandoning faith, let it be a confirmation to you that whatever God is, it's present in that, in your burdens, in your anger, in your outrage. What I love about Jesus is that we see throughout the gospel stories of Jesus him getting completely, um, completely angry with the systems that were in place and the way that those systems were damaging human beings who he loved dearly. And the tables were turned over because of that. And Jesus does have harsh words for the religious leaders because of that. And Jesus is offensive to those who ended up murdering him because of that. So as you're walking through these days and you're trying to be a person of faith and you're trying to retain some semblance of belief, choose to find belief in the holy unrest in you, in how not right this all feels. Let that pissed offness be confirmation that there is something else happening here beyond just what you can see. 
And then take all of that, take all of the the unrest and the not rightness about it all, take all the anger, take all the frustration and all the grief, and then ask yourself, what am I going to do about this? Because the truth of faith is that it's not asking for someone to come down from some place and fix everything. It's not asking for some sort of magic thing to happen to change the world. The truth of faith is that if you are a person of faith and morality and conscience, you exist at this place in time in the history of the planet to alter that planet in ways that reflect the things that you believe and what you care about and what matters to you. So rather than ask yourself where God is in these moments, ask yourself, where am I in these moments? And what does my faith call me to do and to say and to be in these moments? And then have the courage to respond to whatever answers you come up with. That should be your prayer right now. What am I to do at this place in time in history that no one else can do? And maybe after you do that, you realize maybe that's where God is in whatever propelled me to those places, whatever moved me to act. I think there's evidence of goodness. There's evidence of a love that transcends understanding. And yeah, there's evidence of God in the things that we will not abide any longer. Peace today as you listen and pray and move. I'd love if you would take a second and share in the comments either the struggles that you have with belief, the, the things that encourage you uh, to help you retain your faith, or maybe the stories of, of people in the world that give you evidence that whatever you believe God is, exists. Thanks again for being a part of this channel and this community. Peace.